So let's get some practice here by continuing on and talking about how do we handle the fraction 7 tenths, and we'll add to that uh, 2 tenths. Well, what we want to do is recognize that the denominators are already the same. So we know in our answer that the denominator will be a 10. We do not add the denominators together, ever. You never do that. You get the denominators to be the same, and you keep the same denominator in your answer. So we have a 10 here. And then for the numerator, the top number, you add them together because we're adding 7 plus 2. So we have 7 plus 2. So what do we get? 7 plus 2 is 9, and then we have 10. So the answer is 9 tenths. Now, we always check, is this thing simplified? Is it in lowest terms? Can we divide top and bottom by some number to make them simpler? And we can't. We, we can divide by 3 here, sure, but we can't divide 10 by 3. We can divide 10 by 2 or by 5, but we can't divide the 9 by those numbers. So we can't do anything to make it simpler. So that's already in simplest form. So let's take a look with our magnets to see how this thing works out. Here is a pizza cut into 10 pieces, but we only have seven of them. So let's go ahead and look at this. There's one, there's two, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, six tenths. We have seven tenths, we have eight tenths, and then we have nine tenths. And then here we have 10 tenths right here. That's our pizza cut into 10 pieces. But here we actually have seven of those pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is representing seven tenths. And then over here, we actually have another pizza, again, cut into 10 pieces. We only have two of them. So those are two tenths right there. So what we're saying is that when we have seven tenths here and we have another two tenths, the same size and shape of the wedges, because the denominators are the same, we just simply add them together. So this comes in here like this and that becomes the answer. So we have 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, 5 tenths, 6 tenths, 7 tenths, 8 tenths, 9 tenths. 9 out of 10 pieces of the pizza. That's what happens if you cut one pizza into seven, uh, well, into uh, 10 pieces, but have seven of them. Another pizza cut into 10 pieces, and you only have two of them, put them together, then you have essentially nine out of the 10 pieces altogether. That's how we handle this problem. All right, we'll do the magnets for problem number two. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this down. After we get done with problem two here, uh, we're gonna take the training wheels off and we'll stop using the magnets because I think, you know, magnets and drawings are really, really great in the beginning so that we all understand what's happening. But once you get the hang of it, we need to take away all the drawings. And so we'll do one more here with the magnets. Let's say we have uh, one six and we'll add to that uh, one six. Now here we had the problem going horizontal and sometimes you'll see it like that. Here we have them stacked up and down. That's fine. It's the same thing. Firstly, we have six and a six for the denominator. So we know that the denominator is the same. And so we know the denominator of our answer will also be six. So we go ahead and write it down. We have a one and a one. So we add those together. One plus one, right? Like this. And so what do we get? One plus one is two to sixth. And then we ask ourselves, is this fully simplified? Can we simplify this? Uh, well, we can because two and six are, um, two and six are, are divisible by two. They're both even numbers. So if we rewrite the fraction as two sixth, we know that we can divide or multiply the top by anything we want as long as we do it to the top and the bottom. So we'll divide the top by two and the bottom by two. What do we get? Two divided by two is one. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Why? Because 3 times 2 is 6. So the answer that we're getting here is 1 -third. So when we actually take 1 -sixth of a pizza and add it to another 1 -sixth of a pizza, the answer that we get is 2 6. That's correct. But a simpler way to write that is 1 -third. Let's go and take a look at that and see if we understand. First of all, we have a pizza cut into 6 pieces. Here's one piece out of 6, 1 -sixth. And then we have another pizza cut into 6 pieces. There's another 1 -sixth. What we're saying is we add these guys together, and what we get is down here, 2 sixths. This is what we have, 2 sixths. We add this one plus this one, this is what we get. That makes sense to us. What we're saying is that's exactly the same thing as if we had cut the pizza into three pieces but only had one of those pieces, that's one third. And we can see that these are exactly the same thing here. So this is a simpler way of writing this. This is the correct answer, but this is more correct. We always want to write things in lowest terms if we can. So we've done the magnets for the first two problems here. Now I'm gonna take the training wheels off. We're not gonna use any more magnets. We know how to solve the problems and now we know what they mean. So 
when we do these problems, I want you to think back to these examples here in the beginning and what it means to add things together and to simplify to lowest terms. So let's go on to problem number three. And we'll be able to speed up a little bit too because you know we don't have to do the magnets anymore. Here we have two fifths and we'll add it to one fifth. What do we do? We see, are the denominators the same? Yes, they are. So we keep the same bottom number. Then we have two plus one, right? So we have to add those in the numerator, two plus one. And what do we get? Two plus one is three, three out of five pieces. Can we simplify that any further? We cannot divide top and bottom to make this any simpler. So we're done, three out of five pieces, three fifths. That's the final answer. You see, we can speed up a little bit just because we've done so much talking and you should now understand what's going on. Take a look at problem four. Let's take a look at one fourth and we'll add that to two fourths. Now we'll stack these you know, on top of each other, but it's the same exact thing. Are the denominators the same? Yes, they are. So I'll go ahead and say, well, it's gonna be out of four pieces. And then one plus two is gonna be on the top. And what do I get? One plus two is three out of four pieces, three fourths. Can I simplify that any further? No, because I cannot divide the top and bottom by any number to make this thing any simpler. I can't divide this any further, so this is already in simplest form, so I just basically stop. All right, let's go on to problem number five. Let's take a look at three ninths, and we'll add to that one ninth. All right, first, are the bottom numbers the same? Yes, they are. So they are, so we go ahead and put the bottom number the same. And then uh, we add the numerators together, three plus one, which is what, three plus one is four, four out of nine pieces, four out of nine pieces. Can we simplify this any further? Can we make this any simpler by dividing top and bottom? We can't, because this is divisible by two, and this is divisible by three, but we can't divide top and bottom by the same number and make it any simpler. All right, we have reached the halfway point, and the back end of this lesson is gonna go a lot faster, you know, just because we kind of know what we're doing now. What about 3 eighths? And let's add that to the fraction 1 eighth. We'll do it this one horizontal. The denominators are the same, so we know we're gonna have an eight as our denominator here. And we add the numerators here, so three plus one, we'll put on the top, three plus one is gonna be 4 eighths. And then we check, can we divide top and bottom by the same number? Yes, we can. Of course, we could divide by two, uh, that, that would be fine, but then we would have to do it again because we wouldn't have, you know, we wouldn't have, we've done that when we practice simplifying fractions. When you divide by the largest number you can, then you have fewer steps. But we could divide it by two, and then we'd have to do the process again to get to the simplest form. But we can see that we can also divide by four. This is divisible, the four eighths is divisible by four because we can divide the top by four and the bottom by four. Four divided by four is one. Eight divided by four is two, because two times four is eight. So the answer is one half. I mean, doesn't it make sense that four eighths is the same as one half, right? If you have a pizza cut into eight pieces, but you have four of them, that's half the pizza, right? Because that's exactly the same thing, four out of eight pieces, right? Now, if we didn't divide by four, if we didn't realize that, let's divide by two. Four divided by two is two and eight divided by two is four. So if we did that, we would get two fourths. Two fourths, again, two out of four pieces, that's also half the pizza. Then we could divide by two again, and we would get exactly the same thing. So if you divide by two, you'll get two fourths. If you divide by two again, you'll get this. So here we just skip that middle step because we realized we could divide by four. All right, but I want you to know that there's always more than one way to do a problem, every problem. All right, next problem. Let's take a look at four twelfths, and we're going to add that to five twelfths. The denominators are the same, so we know that the answer is going to have a 12 in the denominator. Four plus five goes on the top. We add these numerators, and so what do we have? Four plus five is nine, and the bottom number is 12. Nine twelfths. Can we simplify that? Nine out of 12 pieces. Well, we can because we can divide by three and we can divide this also by three. So we know we have nine twelfths. We can divide the top by three. We can divide the bottom by three. We can divide the top and bottom by whatever we want as long as we do it to the same, to the top and the bottom. Nine divided by three is three. 12 divided by three is 
four because four times three is 12 and three times three is nine. And so the answer we get is three fourths. So when we add four twelfths and five twelfths, the answer we get is nine twelfths, nine out of 12 pieces. But a simpler way to represent nine twelfths is to cut the pizza into four pieces and take three, three fourths. That is the simpler form. All right, we only have three problems, three more problems, and we will be done with this guy. Let's take a look at three tenths and let's add it to one tenth. The denominators, the tens, are the exact same thing. So because of that, we have a 10 in the denominator. Three plus one, we'll be adding these numerators, three plus one will give us what? Four tenths. Can we simplify this? And can we divide top and bottom by something? Well, it's a four and a 10. We can divide the top and bottom by two. So we write the four tenths like this, and we say, well, we can divide the top by two because it's an even number. And we can divide the bottom by two because it's also an even number. And what we will get is four divided by two is two, and 10 divided by two is five. Five times two is 10, two times two is four. Answer is two fifths. So if we take three tenths, and one tenth, we will get four tenths. This is the answer. But a simpler way to write the same amount of pizza is to have two pieces out of five instead of four pieces out of 10. All right, only two more problems. Problems we're getting close to the end of the road here. Let's take a look at three tenths and we'll add it to two, uh, I'm sorry, not three tenths, three twelfths. It'll be three twelfths. Uh, two twelfths. The denominators are both 12, so we have the same number, so we're going to keep that same denominator. And the numerators are two and three, we have to add those. And what do we get? Five out of 12. Can we divide top and bottom by the same number and make it simpler? No, we can't. You can't divide this by three, you can't divide this by five, there's nothing you can divide by to make that any simpler. So we just say that the answer is five twelfths. Five out of 12 pieces. All right, we have one last problem. Let's do it right over here. Let's say we have three sixths and we'll add to that one sixth. The six and the six means we keep the same denominator, which is a six. The three plus the one goes on the top. And so what, we'll, what we will get is three plus one is four sixths. Now, if we take three out of six pieces and one out of six pieces and we add them, we should get four out of six pieces, but this can be simplified because these are both even numbers. That means if I take the four sixth, I can divide the top and bottom by whatever I want. In this case, I'll divide the top by two and I'll divide the bottom by two. And four divided by two is two. And six divided by two is three. Three times two is six. Two times two is four. So if we actually did cut a pizza into six pieces and take three of them and cut another pizza into six pieces and take one of them, then we would have four pieces total out of six, which is what we're saying. But a simpler way to write this amount of pizza is actually as two thirds. Two out of three pieces is the same as four out of six pieces. And that is part two of adding fractions with like denominators. It's incredibly important that you master this because we're going to do subtraction and then we're going to tackle what happens if the denominators, the bottom numbers are actually not the same thing. And a spoiler alert is that if the bottom numbers are not the same, then in order to add them or subtract them, the first step is we have to make them the same. So we do these problems first, we'll save those for later. I want you to practice these, follow on with me, and I'll get you and get your skills where they need to be with adding and subtracting fractions. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.